1.8 million people every year die from diarrheal-related disease. 90% of them are children under five. The major cause is contaminated water. Existing water testing methods are too expensive, too complicated and too remote. The world needs a simple, cost-effective solution. That solution is Aquatest. The Aquatest project is based at the University of Bristol, UK, and led by Professor Stephen Gundry. His team's work focuses on a major issue in water testing that affects public health globally. The difficulty is that from the time that they collect the sample till the time the results come back can be usually weeks, sometimes months. And not giving immediate feedback to communities meant that they didn't link the initial sampling with the result. And anyway, the result often came back as a bit of paper. Large aid agencies see this problem exacerbated in emergency situations. Andy Bastable is head of water and sanitation for Oxfam. In emergencies, people may leave their area and then they straight away start looking for sources. The river, the open well, the hole just dug in the mud, or some pipe water systems that they think are clean, but they're not clean either because they've got contamination in the system or because they're collecting it in a dirty container. The most common cause of water-related disease is drinking water that's been exposed to human or animal faeces. Faeces can carry numerous pathogens that cause diarrhea and other diseases. It's a huge problem in developing countries because people are not very healthy to start with. So if you're malnourished or you've got HIV or some other lingering disease and then you have some bacteria or a virus in your water which causes you illness, that illness is going to be more severe than it would for us in Europe. If water is contaminated by faeces, it tests positive for the E. coli bacterium. But current field kits for water testing have some limitations. You take out into the field a complete suitcase of equipment and effectively perform a laboratory-style test out in the field. Um, lots of pouring and filtering and stuff like that that they do in laboratories. And the difficulty of that is that you need to have a skilled technician to carry out that test in the field. And it's not just the complexity of existing kits that bothers aid agencies. They can cost several thousand dollars each. And then what happens is that over time in a project, people stop using it. So you've had a large capital outlay, but then it doesn't get used anymore. Overcoming the issues of cost and complexity drove the Aquatest team's research and development. The resulting water testing system is simple and easy to operate. The system comprises a water collecting device, an incubator, and a UV light source, all of which easily fits into a small bag. The device is filled from the water source. Pressing down on the cap releases a reagent that promotes bacterial growth, specifically E. coli. The device is then placed into the prepared incubator for 24 hours to allow any E. coli to multiply to detectable levels. The system is so sensitive that even a single bacterium per standard 100 milliliter sample will be detected. One of the most significant challenges of the Aquatest project was that the incubator needed to work reliably in a low-resource setting. 
My colleague, Rob Matthews, came up with this very clever idea of modifying a standard Chinese vacuum flask and including something in it called phase change material so that the incubator can be charged up with heat energy simply by pouring in boiling water and leaving it in there for about 45 minutes. It's then ready to use and when you pop the device in, it will hold a temperature of 37 degrees C, body temperature, for 24 hours. In the most basic setting, you could get your hot water simply by heating water over a fire. But even if you use an electrical source to get your hot water, such as a kettle, it's still, it's still an advantage over a conventional incubator because you only need that electricity supply for a few minutes rather than for 24 hours. After 24 hours, the device is removed from the incubator and the Aquatest UV light is used to read the result. If E. coli is present, one or more of the circular chambers will glow. The more chambers that glow, the higher the level of contamination. The idea with something kind of small and simple and very visual like this device is that anybody can do it. You know, they only need to be shown once and then they can do it themselves. After the test results are read, a built-in disinfectant makes the device safe for disposal. As well as being easy to use, the Aquatest system encourages local trust. And this has the additional benefit of educating communities about water contamination. By showing people the device and the incubation actually happening in the community, they're then able to see the result the following day and know that it's their water that's been tested and they link the level of contamination easily to the problem of their water source. We wouldn't just have our own staff or water authority staff doing the testing. We would be able to give a bunch of them to a suitable person in, in a community and say, right, we'll just give you half an hour training and you can test these various water sources once a week for the next kind of three months or something. We could do that. In 2011, Aquatest began extensive pilot schemes to test some 10,000 devices in the field with NGOs, municipal water suppliers and health agencies. We're testing in Bangladesh, Somalia, DRC, the Congo and Ethiopia. So some fairly challenging environments. So what we'll be looking for is usability mostly. Will our staff be able to use it well? Will it come out with good results? We'll also compare results to other methods. I'll be very surprised if people don't find this easier to use in the field. As field pilots continue in the developing world, Aquatest is also attracting interest in the developed world. Interestingly, there are similar problems in remote communities in parts of Europe and North America where people have their own water supply which is poorly tested at the moment. The other area is the issue of environmental waters, rivers, beaches, and also a growing need to test water that's used on agricultural crops and for feeding animals. The Aquatest team has achieved its founding objectives. A simple, easy to use and accurate test for water at its source. The next phase is to get the system widely adopted by additional partners and investors, both in the humanitarian and commercial sectors, to help bring clean water to all. We're delighted that the Aquatest project has come up with this device. It's a considerable improvement on the existing technologies and what we expect is because of that and because it works out cheaper that we're going to have more water tests. It may also mean that um, communities, because it's so simple, will develop their own interest.